Hey guys, I'm recording this episode from Makati, Manila from my apartment slash condo type thing that I'm going to be staying in for the next few days. It has been a hot minute since my last video episode and I'm very excited about this topic because it is coming to you fresh. So I just landed this morning in Manila and I had come from Singapore from staying with my family for about four or five days. I don't remember exactly. Staying in Singapore actually inspired me to do this episode because if you've been following along on my surrender experiment journey, you'll know that I have been basically going through a whole rediscovery process. And a lot of that process has looked like a lot of slowing down, unplugging and disconnecting. Now, Bali was like the perfect place for me to do that, especially in Ubud, especially if you watched that episode where I talked about my unexpected healing journey. Yeah, from Bali though, I did go to Singapore, which if you've been to Singapore, you'll know is a crazy contrast. You have a super fast pace and I mean fast, like people move fast physically. They even walk really fast and it's a faster way of life simply because it's more streamlined, more automated, much more technologically advanced, even for Australian standards. And it's just a very, very different society. So I kind of got a little bit of a shock at how fast it was considering the pace that I was moving at when I was living in Bali. But it inspired me to do this episode because I feel like being someone who advocates a flow-based lifestyle and anti-hustle, maybe not anti, but doing life with less hustle, let's say, I found that my journey over the last six months has really been more so slowing down and learning how to go with the flow. But staying in Singapore really woke me up to just how important it is though to have a balance of making sure that you challenge yourself. Being challenged is an essential part of being in flow. If you really think about it, like you can't have rest and slowness without having fast and productivity and all the great things, right? They need to be in balance, like the yin and the yang. And so I found that I have sort of, in a way, swung to the very left side of the, pe the, pe the pendulum. I have swung so far to the left side where I found myself so relaxed, so like, I don't care whatever releasing of the timelines that I don't actually get anything done. And that tends to be struggle because then nothing gets done. In business, I realized after being in Singapore where everybody is on an agenda, my cousins, because I lived in uh, my family's home, my cousins who are all in their mid-20s are literally studying themselves so hard, studying themselves, they're studying so hard every single day, every single day, like 4 a.m. Uh, this is normal, by the way. Studies are like held at a very high standards. Your accomplishments, I even asked my cousin, like if you're not taking an internship or studying throughout the year like do people think you're lazy and he's like yeah if you're not studying taking up a part-time gig or doing internships you're considered lazy that's just the culture so after staying in this environment it kind of woke me up to what it's like you know on the other side of being way too relaxed and doing very little and having a very, very focused, driven, high performance mentality. I think that being around this kind of environment while having gone through my own like self-discovery journey around what flow looks like really helped me to see the stark contrast. And I thought it might be really helpful to share with you guys because you know, we're all about that freedom and flow but how it inspired me to really marry the two. For me, the reason why I swung so hard to the like really slow, abandon all responsibility if I don't feel like it and um, just go with how I'm feeling without any real discipline to the point where nothing got done in my business is because nobody really ever taught me how to balance the two. And I'm willing to bet that the same thing happens for you. I'm willing to bet that you're somebody who wants a flow-based lifestyle and business, but you find yourself swimming, swimming, swinging way far to the left and doing absolutely nothing and not getting anything done and wondering like, is this actually flow? Is this actually surrendering? Because nothing's getting done. And I don't know how to re-motivate myself because now I'm too far detached. So I wanna speak into that today because I have literally just come out of that myself. And then I just wanted to speak into how we can start to have a really great harmonious blend of the two. Because 
let's start with this, right? Let's start with the flow cycle. By the way, I'm gonna be going into a whole as series teaching you guys about flow state. I'm so excited for this. Like, I, 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 can't, I have no words, I have no words. I've been studying up on this guys. I have been educating myself. I have been applying this work. I have been my own guinea pig for the last few months, really learning, understanding, applying flow-based living and flow-based business. And I'm so excited to teach you guys. I'm gonna be doing an entire series on the podcast, deep diving into it so you guys can really understand what I mean when I say flow state. I want you to really understand like, just briefly, and I'll do a whole ass episode on another day, what are the four stages and, and where it factors in to have a little bit of release and, and kind of like just going with the flow and to have some focus and some challenge. So the four stages in the flow cycle is firstly, you need a challenge. You need to be overloaded with information. That overloading or that loading stage is what they call it is when your brain is being loaded with all of these challenges and you wanna be solving those challenges. You wanna be solving those problems. In this loading stage, you're meant to feel resistance. You're meant to feel discomfort. So usually that's why they say focus is required in order to activate flow because flow is actually not the first stage of the cycle. It's actually the third stage. So the first stage, you need to be challenged. And that's why we need you here. We need you to be actively still pursuing something. Something that being in Singapore taught me was that everybody's got something that they're pursuing and they're working really hard to pursue it. It's a whole other conversation though, to talk about whether they're happy doing that because I did speak to some people who are like, I don't know, I'm just doing it because it's what I'm here to do. It's what I've been told to do. It's what I need to do, yada, yada. That's another conversation. But the people who can like really really get down to the nitty gritty and just get things done are people who are just crystal clear on what they need to do. And when you're clear on just on what you need to do, then your brain literally helps you to accomplish that thing. It starts to look for patterns. It starts to look for opportunities. It goes to work problem solving. All that is needed for your focus is your commitment to solve it, to solve the problem. This is the first stage. The second stage is release. And this is where the second half comes in. This is where flow begins to activate. When you enter stage two of the flow cycle, what you actually need to be doing is to be introducing a completely new stimulus. You need to completely release from the challenge and have a completely new stimulus that allows you to relax, to completely change state. The point of the release stage, the second stage, is to be able to shift your thinking from high focus into complete relaxation. And what this does is it combines neurochemically chemicals that were once present with the high focus and all of the things, the concentration with the feel good emotions and chemicals that come with relaxation and rest. And this sense of fulfillment matched with challenge and focus creates like this amazing cocktail in your mind, in your body, and physically, mentally, you just feel really, really great because it's just that perfect combination. And then comes a the third stage, that is flow. That is when you open the gates wide for flow. So like I said, flow isn't the first thing that you'll experience in the flow cycle. It's the third stage. So there actually needs to be a combination of the challenge and the focus, the stimulus of overloading your brain, and then the release, a full shift in your state. This makes way for flow. I'm gonna talk about the fourth stage recovery in a whole other episode because I just love talking about it. But look, here's what you need to know. When we're talking about falling in love with what you're doing, and falling back in love with your business, falling back in love with the work after you've swung way too far to the left and you've just kind of lost control and you kind of just let loose and now you're like, I'm disoriented. I need you to understand that all you need to do is get committed to what it is you're here to do again. To put simply, like here's how it showed up in my journey. So like I told you, I had swung way to the left and I found myself in the past few weeks feeling a little bit disoriented in my business, feeling like, I don't really know how to get back on the wagon again because I've just spent a lot of time just being in this releasing energy. 
to the point where I didn't even feel like I wanted to get ambitious for my business. I didn't feel inspired to go hard and, and you know, to do all the things that I normally would. And then I just felt like I was having a crisis, like in my life, in my business, I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing anymore. And so that's when I realized after coming to Singapore and witnessing this very, very advanced, high focus, highly driven, very efficient society, I saw the beauty in the hustle. And that's something you would never catch me saying because usually the hustle is something that I'm trying to steer away from. But I saw the beauty in the hustle because I saw the level of commitment and the deep, deep, deep resilience that people had to the things that they wanted to pursue. It had me thinking, how committed am I to what I believe I'm here to do? And that's what really woke me up because it wasn't about exactly what I was doing, whether I was business coaching or doing life coaching or running events. All of a sudden, it was just about my life's purpose. And I had to really ask myself, how committed am I? When push comes to shove, how committed am I to actually putting in the work? And so I learned that I actually haven't been putting in the work, right? There is a degree to which actually stepping back and letting go and releasing is also classified as putting in the work, but you know more than anybody else, you know in your heart of hearts when it's actually time to work and you've actually just been avoiding it or you've been avoiding making a commitment. And you know what? Commitments are meant to be uncomfortable. So one of the things that I had to do after a huge journal dumping session, I was just blurting out everything that I was feeling about just not recommitting. Like I had so much resistance to recommitting because I didn't want to go into hard work. I didn't want to fall back into hustle. I just had so much subconscious resistance that I let it come out and then I put it on paper and then I just kind of sat with myself and I expressed some deep as gratitude for myself. I didn't realize how important this would be for my recovery through this process of re-entering, getting back into work until that happened. I was let me tell you, I was bawling my eyes out because you know what I said in my previous episode, how I was going through this healing journey and I didn't even really know what I was healing from. Like none of it made sense. In that moment, I realized why I was going through it. What I was healing from was the fact that I was unable to meet my own standards because my standards were always unrealistically high. And that's why they overwhelmed me and drove me into exhaustion in the first place. I had to forgive myself. I had to meet myself where I was and really just acknowledge that the only person making it hard for me to show up in business is me. And from that came a lot of inner self dialogue of discovering deeper layers of my past that I didn't even know were affecting the way I was showing up. It got me realizing that a lot of the work that I've been doing, like leading women through breakthrough, helping people with their businesses, transforming people's mindsets are things that I haven't personally gone through in a very long time. And I tried to pinpoint the last time that I actually did like really deep inner work to a point where I uncovered an old identity and actually fully released that old identity as in like deep, deep, deep work. And to be honest, it wasn't since I started my business because that's when I had complete identity shifts. And if you're someone like me who maybe you've been building your business for like three or so years now, and you're finding that you're hitting a wall, you're hitting a plateau, or you're just finding it really, really hard and you don't really know why, maybe this is the case for you too. Maybe the last time you had a real deep uprooting of your sense of self was way back when you started. And now I know this might be really hard to admit, your pride is gonna take a hit, but the key word here is humility. If you wanna surpass your current level and go to your next, you're gonna need to do a complete identity updo. You're gonna need to go through your personal revival. And that's got to be just as uncomfortable as the first time round when you started your business. And a lot of the time, our ego doesn't wanna take a hit. And so we would rather hold on to this version of ourselves today that is no longer gonna keep us growing to the next stage than to have to go through the beginner stage feelings again, or feeling like we don't know what we're doing. Things are gonna fall apart hard and fast. 
in this stage and it's gonna be so normal. How we're gonna self-sabotage in this season of our lives and our businesses is when we try to cling on to everything even though it's freaking falling apart because our pride doesn't wanna take a hit. And so the key word for me that's just been coming up is humility, like be humble. Be humble. I remember when I first started my business and you might remember your beginning origin story as well. We had to be so resilient, so humble, so hardworking, so willing to put in whatever the heck we needed to, whatever money, whatever time, just to get this business off the ground. And we didn't care. We didn't care how many hours we stayed up. We didn't care how much money we would have to scrape in our bank account and put into mentoring or invest in stuff that's gonna help us build this business because we were just so deeply committed. And I know for me, like that level of fire and commitment has not come up in a long time. I might say, that it has or I might say that I'm really fiery and passionate but it isn't really costing me something and I liken this to being a Christian and becoming a Christian for the first time you've got this like really really big faith high in the beginning of your Christian journey if you get me and you're like inviting everybody to church you're bringing all your friends to Bible study you're doing all the things and nobody's gonna tell you. You will stay up late to talk to a friend, to minister to someone, to stay at church late, to volunteer. Like you will do all the things because you're just so on fire, right? This is like the kind of hot, fiery commitment that your business and your life needs in order to keep growing. And it is one of the hardest truths to realize that you're gonna need to go through an occasional every year or two, an occasional uprooting, like a full uprooting, and it's gonna suck. Things are gonna change, things are gonna break. Everything you build is going to be challenged in order to make way for the new version of you. And sometimes we cap ourselves because we just don't want it. We don't want the discomfort. We don't want to be a beginner again. We don't want to feel the, the feelings of being brand new and being vulnerable. We would rather hold on to the things that make us feel safe, like the accomplishments we made in our first year in business, like the pace at which we were able to accomplish goals. Like this is something that came up for me. Actually, I realized that I accomplished a lot in my very, my very first year in business. Like, I was that girl that my coaches would rave about. I would rave about myself because it was like, wow, this girl is on fire. She can make things happen just like that. And I had so many big wins in the first one to two years of my business that when the third year came, things started to slow down because I was doing things the way that I had started my business. And this version of me that's needed in order to scale my business or in order to get my business off the ground at another level, I didn't have the manpower for that. I didn't have the capacity for that because I was all of a sudden attached to this first year evolution version of me. We need a 2.0 version, but Nicole currently is a 1.0 version and she wants to stay a 1.0 version because it's comfortable. Sister don't want to upgrade even though she says that she's doing an upgrade. This is how it works. And this is how we self sabotage our own success. So let's talk about falling back in love with the work. This is really where rubber hits the road because now you can see the deep impact of not being willing to get uncomfortable. So what am I gonna tell you when it comes to falling in love with the work? Is you're gonna need to find a way to love hard work again. It sounds counterintuitive when I'm teaching you flow-based business, but honey, as I said in the very beginning of this episode, activating flow requires a combination of hard work and focus and release and relaxation. Unless you have these two ingredients, you cannot access flow. Like it is a locked tight, my dear. You can't sit there and not do hard work and you can't sit there and make excuses like hustle is not my vibe. I get it, I get it, right? Hustle is not the vibe when it's the only thing you're doing. I mean, look, let's swap the word hustle for hard work instead, if that doesn't resonate with you. But you get it, right? Hard work is different to hustle. If you're at a point where, like me, just a few weeks ago, you were like, but I don't wanna work hard on the things that I've already built because I feel disconnected to it, or I don't know if I should even continue with this niche or this business model because I don't feel connected to it anymore after my deep uprooting and identity shifting. Sister, that's okay, that's normal. That's normal in a, a pivoting stage or in a stage where you're going through a lot of inner transformations. Your business has to grow with you, which means that there naturally will be things that you are not connected to in your business anymore after your rediscovery process. The hard work from here is to build a business that you do love again. And that means sometimes you gotta build from scratch. But remember that you have already got 
great foundations. You're not starting from zero. Remind yourself that you have experience. You have things that you have learned through actual experimenting and actual testing. Don't discount or disqualify yourself just because you're building from the ground up. And guys, don't tell yourself that you have to build from the ground up. Like, oh, woe is me. My business is like nothing again. This is something that I found myself spinning out in and it's just not helpful. I want you to think about it like this is literally just how you progress forward. You have not taken a step back. You, This is how you progress forward. Ask any successful CEO, ask your, your most successful coaches and entrepreneurs. They will tell you the same thing. You, in order to get to the next level of your business, in order to get the next level of you, there needs to be a lot of shifting a lot of personal shifting, a lot of uprooting and a lot of constant changing. And the more comfortable you get with this cycle, the faster you will move through it every single time. And just like the flow cycle, there's got to be challenge, there's got to be release, and then there will be flow, and then there's recovery. And then you go through it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, right? So I hope you get it, I hope you get it. Like. If there's anything you take away from this, it's that you must allow yourself to go through each stage of the process with grace and don't rush the process either. If you are in a stage in the process where you're in the, let's say you're in the first, uh, in the second stage where you have to release just like I was. When I was in that stage of release and I was like feeling completely like disoriented, disconnected from everything I built, feeling kind of like I was having an existential crisis and like everything I've built just is suddenly falling apart and I don't know the purpose of life anymore. Like I literally was in that situation. <laughs> Let yourself be in that situation as long as you need to. Really go to work on reminding yourself of why this is essential that you stay the path and remember that there is a process to everything. Everything has its own cycle and season and so that too will pass. Okay, let yourself sit in the discomfort of not knowing what you're gonna do next. Let yourself surrender to, you know, the feelings of uncertainty and let whatever needs to come up, come up. Let yourself grieve for the fact that you, you don't feel like you know what you're doing anymore. Let yourself feel vulnerable again like you did when you were a beginner and you didn't know where the next paycheck was gonna come from. These are the emotions and the thoughts that I have had to work through and allow. And girl, I have not cried about these things in a long time. And I'm a crier. And that's how I knew that I had no long, that I was so stuck in my self-created ego bubble and pride. And so when I really let myself be vulnerable, I really let myself admit that I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And then I felt like a beginner again, and I felt like a failure and it felt like, whatever, all the things, then it made way for the next stage, which was flow. And being able to just like let yourself move through cycles without trying to rush or force it, it's just the most beautiful experience ever. Because isn't that what life is about anyway? Isn't that what this whole journey is about? Like I've had a lot of realizations the past few weeks, if not the whole like one and a half months almost that I've been traveling. And they have just been the most beautiful, it was like, it's like the serendipitous realizations. Like they were just coming at the right time in the right places. And I could not for the life of me have planned this journey of evolution. And yet look how life takes care of you. Look how the ideas just come when they come. The inspiration flows when it flows. Let life do its thing, girl, and just go with it. Just go with it, right? And the, at the end of the day, the point isn't the money, the business or the brand. And if it is, great. But I know for me and for those of you in my audience who are watching, the point has always been a values-based life. And so underneath wanting the successful business or wanting the money, there is a value under there that you want to meet. Maybe it's to feel safe. Maybe it's to feel secure. Maybe it's to feel loved. Maybe it's to feel appreciated. Maybe it's to experience enjoyment. Maybe it's to have experiences that you will never forget. Like these are values that you have and check in with those values. Check in that you don't get lost in trying to pursue just the money or just the business or just the status. 
who cares? I know that you don't care. Deep, 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 deep down, what you care about is having a life in alignment to your values. That's what you care about. So remind yourself of what those things are, okay? And once you remind yourself of what those things are, use it to fuel you in your season, whichever part of your season you find yourself in. I promise you, things will happen in their due time. All you need to do is stay the path, get committed and get crystal clear on what you're doing and why you're doing. And you know what? Even if you don't know the what, even if you don't know the how, which most of the time you won't, let yourself be committed to you, committed to what you value and let that be enough to guide you. If you stay committed to what you value, then your question every single day, every single moment, every single decision to ask yourself is, how do I honor what I value in this moment with my next decision? And I promise you that will lead you one step closer and closer and closer to being on your path. Okay, my lovelies, that is all for this episode. I hope that this helped you and inspired you. I'll be in touch very soon. And don't forget, I'm releasing the flow-based series very, very, very soon. So keep an eye out on the podcast and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.